picking your favorite child is hard, but it's it's a uh, um, a lot of times, say in the early days, I tended to gravitate towards Raphael as when I would do a, a single turtle adventure, I would go to Raphael only because you could push him and take him other places. He was a bit more of a wild card, so you could do other things with him that maybe you couldn't with the other ones. Let's go. Let's hey, I'm the leader of the group. You sound like you have bronchitis. <laughs> I'm uh, Tyler Nichols with JoeBlow.com, and first of all, I am a big Turtles fan, so I just wanted to thank you for talking with me today. Thank you very much. Nice to talk with you as well, Tyler. So tell me, what was your initial reaction when you heard that Seth Rogen and Evan Goldberg wanted to produce a new Turtles film? Well, being a lifelong huge fan of you know Seth Rogen and his movies, um, and you know the fact that I would have... When I lived in LA, I used to see him occasionally at the comic store. I would also frequent. Um, I knew he was uh, a fan uh, of the uh, of the genre of you know comics as a genre and and uh, this this kind of pop culture storytelling. So I was really, uh, again, as a big fan, I was really thrilled that um, he wanted to take a, an approach and 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 give his personal and unique vision to uh, um, our Peter and I's characters. Y'all some little tortoises, huh? Look at you. Y'all adorable, man. Were you able to contribute at all to Mutant Mayhem? You know what the best part was is no, is uh, I think that, you know, what they took, you know, Jeff Rowe and Evan and, and Seth took from, you know, 35 years of turtle history is uh, this wonderful opportunity to go back through to the original comic books, to the original cartoon shows, the different variations from the fast forward in the 2000s to, you know, the, um, the even the most brilliantly, wonderfully done uh, Nickelodeon series, the 2012 series. And they could pick their favorite parts and moments of what they liked about Turtles and the evolution of them and make it into almost their own unique turtle multiverse, if you will. Mm -hmm. I know that term's probably overused a bit much, but it is <laughs> kind of a, a unique thing that they, they, they did. and. Uh, um, yeah, and I love that they, I feel like they they did pick some of those elements, but a lot of it was solidly founded in some of the original, original comic series, which is great. You watch a movie with a human? Ugh. You ratted us out. Hey, don't use that word that way. So Shredder was even teased for a future film, and obviously he's been spotlighted a lot in other films. But is there any, is there anyone else, any other character that you would like to see take center stage as a big bad? And I would like to make a plea for uh, Old Hob. Thank you. No, uh, what I loved is um, the, the fact that, that their approach to this movie was to not include Shredder and save that for something down the road, but to bring in all the other mutants first. Because one of my favorite um, uh, original concepts that they brought to this idea was... Um, the fact that the uh, a lot of the other mutants and the bad guys were created, um, they had they share the same origin story to that concept of you know we're not alone, you know the turtles, you know saying that to the other mutants when they first meet them, and it creates this immediate bond with them, uh, um, and I and I love that, um, so that really gave a chance to tell um, uh, a more unique, original, mutant centric, which you know thus the title mutant man. Mm -hmm. Um, but then save something like the evolution of um, other bad guys like Shredder and, of course, Old Hob, which I love from the IDW. <laughs> and, you know, eventually maybe we'll see Krang at some point. But there's um, there's a there's a lot of them. But I, I love that this one is just packed full of mutants. And that's really fantastic and very funny, you know. Yeah. And I think the fact that it is so packed full of mutants is what makes it feel so much like the comics rather than like the live action movies or something like that. Yeah, totally spot on. Yeah, yeah. And so this is the first time that we're seeing the turtles actually voiced by teenagers. And since you're one of the original creators, like when you wrote the characters in your head, did you hear something more akin to teens or like the more young adult style that we're used to? It was really it was it's very interesting process because I was mentioning um, I was just talking to somebody that the uh, um, we did a comic convention this weekend which was uh, in Florida with the original voice talent from the first TV series and that was the first time that we the voices were brought to life in, for the wider audience because before Pete and I would have different voices um, like I always thought of say Peter Laird when I thought of Donatello because Peter's our, the, our technical first guy to get a computer and Casio calculate a watch and then. You know, Michelangelo to me was a cross between, you know, Robin Williams and a friend I had in high school was the our high school comedian, you know. And so it was always these different voices that I had that I would drift to when I was writing them stuff. But when you finally have characters that are brought to life um, and you start hearing those voices, and that was just the best idea for bringing in real teenagers to not only bring that natural, very organic um, way that they talk, because, you know, we can't write 
the way that they talk. You know, we have a 17 year old son and sometimes we kind of like wish we could have, you know, <laughs> um, closed captioning under what he's saying sometimes to really get the full story. <laughs> Yeah. Well, and I'll tell you right now, my uh, my nephew uh, really, really connected with the film. And I think it's specifically because it's like the, they sound like him. Yep. Yeah, it was this one, two, it was his cat and, you know, I'm scared of cats. So. You know, just to get Paul Paul Rudd to do, you know, <laughs> favorite actors, you know, I love your vibe. I love your vibe. Or, you know, Ray Filet, you know, to have, you know, Post Malone. It just. Yeah. Spot and then you know Jackie Chan a Splinter. Come on, I mean that was just uh, was so good. good. And I I know it's a bit like asking you which is your favorite child, but do you have a favorite turtle that you prefer to write? It it you know honestly it is like it it, it, it it's it's picking your favorite child is hard, but it's it's a uh, um, a lot of times say in the early days I tended to gravitate towards Raphael as when I would do a a single turtle adventure I would go to Raphael only because you could push him and take him other places. He was a bit more of a wild card, so you could do other things with him that maybe you couldn't with the other ones. But it was really, once you had an idea about a specific turtle, you were all in, you know, Michelangelo's Christmas story was one of my favorite things, you know, Michelangelo going into a toy store in the middle of, you know, cause he's all dressed up, he can enter yeah. So yeah, it's re it's really um, based on the story. It's it's picking your favorite turtle and making it work as a, as a, as a device, storytelling device. Yo, come on y'all, let's get the goods. Ah! Oh!